Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. I just want to share a few thoughts with you tonight on, on faith. We, we on a series on faith is, and uh, so today I want to speak about faith is trusting. Now, on, on Wednesday, we also looked at this portion of scripture uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 9. And I want to just maybe just read a few verses from there as we kick off tonight. I pray that you are blessed. Looking forward to a great weekend and trusting God that he's going to uh, just minister to you throughout this weekend. And even for your home and for your family, that God is watching over you. Hallelujah. Amen. So Matthew chapter 9 verse 27, it says, As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. And when he had done, had gone indoors, the blind man came to him and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they replied, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and according to the, your, he said, and he said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. Amen. You know, uh, I, I, as I introduced this on Wednesday, we were speaking about the blind men. The Bible says the blind men followed him and called out to him. Now, it may seem normal to us when uh, you, uh, I say to you, someone followed me. But for a blind person to follow you, is something calling out yes they can speak yes they can hear but following you is something else sometimes you got to use all that you have to get what you need these men followed Jesus hearing his voice they may have used their sense of hearing to follow him as he was speaking. And the Bible says they didn't just follow him down the road. They followed him into the house that he went into. They didn't just, they, they, they weren't just saying, we're calling out to you, have mercy on us, son of David, and waited there. They did something actively. Now this is an amazing thing. Is some of us want God to do certain things in our lives, but we are not prepared to follow. We are prepared to ask. But we do nothing more than asking. We will complain. But we won't follow. There's something about these men that they demonstrated a level of faith even in their following. And I want to challenge you today. Follow after God. When you really desire God to make to do a work in your life follow after him hear his voice and, and 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 this is the powerful thing is that they were hearing his voice and they were following him they didn't have to see him they only heard him and i want to encourage you today when jesus asked them the question he asked them do you believe that i'm able to do this other versions of scripture will say, do you believe that I'm able to heal? You know, normally blind people wait for you to come to them and give them money or give a donation or do something. These men weren't concerned, weren't concerned on just getting a little bit of money, getting an act of kindness toward them. They were, they were saying, have mercy on us. They were saying, we do not want to be in the same state anymore. I want to talk to some people that are saying, I'm tired of being in the place that I'm at. Something's got to change. I need God to intervene. And Jesus asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? What was it? Do you believe that I'm able to heal? Asking, following, 
must be coupled with your believing that God is able to do what he said he can do. And they followed him knowing that he was their healer. So I want to speak today on faith is trusting even if you don't get what you wanted. Now two facts about God and I introduced it on Wednesday. Firstly, God hears and he answers prayer. Secondly, God does not always answer the way we want him to answer. And I said on Wednesday, sometimes God's answer may be a yes. Sometimes God's answer may be a no. Some, but sometimes God's answer may be not yet. Sometimes even God may answer and says, I've got something better in store for you. But would you believe God to answer? Remember that God is there to meet our needs, not our greeds. You know, sometimes we are no as parents, uh, our, we don't say yes to everything that our children want. And you know those parents that say yes to everything their children want. Often we call them spoiled brats. They become spoiled because they do not know how to hear a no. And they do not know how to hear a not yet. And they do not know how to hear that, no, this may not be the best thing for you now. I believe this is important for us to understand. We have to understand how to trust God. Trust God that he knows what is best for us. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the All-Sufficient One. He knows what is best for us. And trust him to give us what he believes is best for us. Do you trust him to, to know, not only to know what is best for us, but to do what is best for us? Sometimes we, we, we pray, you know, many times we found ourselves and uh, in, in a place of difficulty. I do not know whether you found yourself, but you know, often in life, I found myself in times of difficulty. And sometimes I prayed and I said, Lord, take me out of this. But instead of God taking me out of the situation, the problem, the challenge that I was facing, God gave me the strength to go through it. Now, this is very important because faith has to do with your character. And God is more interested in your character than your comfort. God is more interested in developing you to become a mature, strong individual, strong son and daughter of the Most High God. He's, he's, more he's more interested in making you stronger and making you come through challenges. I believe character is one of the most important aspects of, of any person's life, of any person's life personality uh, this is the character is very important if God takes away all of our problems we'll be spoiled that means that every time I get into a problem I pray I say God do this and he answers and he takes away the problem takes away the problem have you ever done that keep taking away the problems trying to make everything better now you know as parents, I know I'm guilty of that too. I want to make everything better. I want to make everything nice. As a pastor, it's been a challenge of mine also. I want to fix everything. I want to make everything better and I want to do it quickly. I'm impatient with that. But you know what the reality was? Sometimes it doesn't allow the person to go through to develop some character. There's nothing that develops character than going through challenges. I believe that character is forged in the furnace of afflictions. When you go through difficult times, when you go through difficulties in your life, it helps to shape your character. It helps to shape your perspective. It helps you to move, shift from just being self-centered 
It helps you to shift from, from just going through the moment. Uh, it, it helps you to get a, a reality check that the whole world doesn't revolve around you. And there's so many things else that is happening. A hallmark of faith ends with a list of those who did not see a fulfillment of their request. Many of them suffered violent deaths for their faith. Let us look, look at the, that portion of scripture because I want to, to just reiterate in, in, for us today that it does not mean just because you are going through, uh, just because you're a believer, you are not going to experience any challenges. In verse 36, oh sorry, we can go from, from verse 35. It says, there were others who were tortured, refusing to be re released so that they may gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and floggings and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God planned something better for us, so that only together with us, they would be made perfect. What a scripture. You know, when we, when we look at the, 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 the Hebrews chapter 11, we, we see, you know, Abraham had a faith and God gave him a son and, and, and God developed him to be a mighty nation through his generations to come. When we see Noah, Noah had faith and he built an ark. It took him 120 years, but the floods came. And they witnessed what God told him. But imagine for those that believed and yet did not see what they had faith in. They were faithful. Even they were persecuted for their faith. They died horrible deaths without seeing the, fru the fruition of what they trusted. But Jesus said, they too will receive the promise as we enter in. Because it was through them enduring persecution, we can now enjoy the salvation, the faith that we, can, we have today. Many, many, many great men and women of God suffered so that we can now enjoy the freedom to worship and praise God. I want to challenge you. Have faith to trust God. There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. And God doesn't have to fulfill all of that in our lifetime. But I can assure you, even in, a, in eternity, He will continue to fulfill it. We need real faith. True faith. And true faith is built in the valleys of life. Sometimes we have to trust God when, even when we don't get what we ask for. Just want to leave two points with you. How do you build your faith? Two ways. First, you build your faith through the Word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Secondly, God builds faith through trials and through tests. Let's just look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests purified gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise, glory, and honor. And on the day when Jesus is revealed, 
to the whole world. Amen. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. Hallelujah. You're going to come out of this victorious. You're going to come out of this triumphant. You are going to come out of this more than a conqueror. Because your faith is in God. You're trusting in God. You're not wavering. You're not doubting. You're not giving up. Amen. Let's just bow our heads together. Father, give us the faith to trust. Give us the faith to believe. Even when we don't see. Even when the answers are not favorable. Give us the faith to believe that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, imagine, or even think. Father, I pray today, may you show up in our lives. May you show, show up in the lives of family. May you show up in the lives of our loved ones. May you show up in the lives of your sons and daughters in a miraculous way. And as they trust in you, May their faith increase. May they become stronger. Father, may you bring them through every struggle because you, O oh God, have a perfect plan for each one of us. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen and amen. May God develop you, develop your character, and I, I assure you, your faith is genuine in God. God bless.